tribe of Benjamin are those slaves that were scattered throughout Jamaica and the West Indies. Okay, let's go to this book entitled From Babylon to Timbuktu. Get me, uh, show them the book, and we're going to set it up. Okay, this is the book entitled From Babylon to Timbuktu, written by Rudolf R. Wenzel. And let's go to page 133 to prove that the Israelites are in the Caribbean islands, those West Indies. It's page 133 in this book entitled From Babylon to Timbuktu. Before Dr. Godby published his book, The Lost Tribes, A Myth, Rabbi Matthew organized a Hebrew congregation in 1918 and proclaimed that the black people of the United States and the West Indies are the original black Hebrews. Notice it says, and the West Indies. That's the part I want you to highlight in your mind. And the West Indies. Now, let's go to Nature Knows No Color Line by uh, J.A. Rogers. It says uh, at the bottom of the page, it says, many of the Jews who were banished from Portugal by John II, settled in the West Indies. Settled where? In the West Indies. Many of the Jews that was banished from Portugal settled in the West Indies. Go ahead. John Bigelow, who visited Jamaica in 1850. Visited where? Visited Jamaica in 1850, saw the descendants of these Jews and say, they were Negroid. They are Negroid. Okay, so from there. Okay, thank you. Now let's get the Bible. Let's get the Bible. Okay. Let's go to Genesis 49 about Benjamin. The word, the name Benjamin, Benjamin was the 12th son of Jacob mm -hmm. and Rachel. Benjamin means son of the right, which was Jacob's favorite son. He was the baby boy. So you West Indians, you are the babies of Israel. Hmm. Okay, Genesis 49, and let's start at 27. Thank you. Right. It's the book of uh, Genesis chapter 49, verse 27. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey. Read it one more time. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. Now, how do we know? That the blacks that are in the West Indian Islands is Benjamin. Raven as the wolf is the key. The term wolf, what is the Latin word for that? Maroon. Okay, so now, oh, maroon, what are we talking about? Bear with me a second. Get, let's go to this book here. Get this book from uh, Columbus to Castro. Okay, from Columbus to Castro, and let's go to page 67. I'm going to read from page 67 at the bottom. It says, the local authorities unable to subdue the maroons. The word maroon means wolves or, or, or wild dogs, to be exact. Wild dogs, which is a wolf. Go ahead. Offered in 1545 to allow them to live in peace. The, this is uh, page 68. The Maroons replied that such was their desire, but that they did not trust the word of the Spaniards. So these Maroons, these were the runaway slaves. These, what they called these wolves, these wild dogs. These were the runaway slaves. Now you had Maroons in many of the islands, but the ones that became very famous were the ones in Jamaica. Those are the ones that overthrew the British armies and repelled them out of Jamaica. Okay, read on. The Maroon leader, Diego de Campo, was feared throughout the country. He defeated troops sent against him, burned sugar mills, and abducted slaves. Eventually, he was caught. My name is Noel Prehe. And you're Colonel, Colonel of the Scottsdale Maroons. Okay. Yes. And why is the Maroons important to Scots Hall or Jamaica for that matter? Well, the Maroons are the ones who started the fight for an independent Jamaica, which the whole Jamaica is now enjoying. And the Maroons started first? The Maroons are the ones who started first. Could you tell me a little bit about that, sir? 
Yeah, they, they had fought it. They fight for 84 years for the freedom of themselves and other Africans. However, the English could not withstand the fight with the Maroon. So they made out a treaty, which I'm very disgusted about this treaty because they did not consult the Maroons in the first place to have dialogues with them and to say what would be the terms and conditions of the treaty. Just wrote the treaty. After writing the treaty, they wrote two other declarations. One ditto to Chilani town for 300 pounds per year to clear the roads and there should be three white superintendents in Chilani town at the time to visit the homes of the Maroons to see how many people were living in each home, how many were sick, how many were fit for service, how many children they have, where they go to school and where they get their clothes and their food and that should be 300 pounds per year for that. There should be a hundred pound dairy also and hundred pound for Scots Hall and there should also be three white superintendents to visit all, all the homes and to find out how many people living in the homes, how many children, where they get their food, their clothes, and the condition of their house and their roads. However, from 1738 until now, we haven't received a cent from this 100 pound or the 200 pound. Very disgust about that. So the British have not lived up to their treaty? No, they have the... not lived up to their treaty and they have breached because they have taxed Scots Hall, Maroon Town. So they, they tax Scots Hall but have not returned what they promised? They no, have not nothing. lived up to the treaty? No, they did not live up to the treaty. And well, up to now. And, and sir, what else would you like the world to know about the Maroons at Scots Hall? But I would like them to know that the Maroons of Scots Hall are the ones with the, the background of the, the culture because we speak even our own language like we are talking here to each other. Right. If it was me and another Maroon, I would say we are Tuajina Yenkunku Biniz. Tuajina Yenkunku Biniz. That is to say, we are talking about free and independent Maroon business. Tuajina. Let's read Genesis 49 again, verse 27. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. Now, you got to think about it. The term raven means what? To speak rash or boldly. When you examine a wolf, okay, this is another level I want you to examine. A wolf does what? It howls at the rising of the moon. And when it howls, it sounds beautiful to the ear. But guess what? It's scary at the same time because you know what that means. It's hunting season. The wolf is coming out. The wolf is coming to get you. So likewise, the, it, the blacks of the West Indies, in their music, they raven like wolves. It's beautiful to the ear. But what? Listen to the lyrics. What are they singing about? Revolution. They're singing that they're Israelites, and they're singing about the overthrow of Babylon. You got many artists. Let me read some of them to you. You got certain artists speak through the music of America uh, being Babylon and how it's going to fall, uh, that Christ... It's Christ, about Christ, Solomon. Um, you got these singers that sing about themselves being Israelites. For example, Luciano, the white man's kingdom is falling. That's a song he did. Dennis Brown, he has a song called Black Revolution. Do you know what it means to have a revolution? Peter Tosh has a song called Oppressor Man. Oppressor Man, tell me where you gonna run to. Oppressor Man, tell me where you gonna run to. Oppressor Man, where you gonna run to? You got a group called Burning Spear with a song called Do You Remember the Days of Slavery? Remember the days of slavery? Do you remember the days of slavery? 
You got Junior Reed with a song called The Lord is My Shepherd. You got Anthony B, Fire Upon Rome. Fire upon Rome. Okay, you got also, they, 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 they got a song called The White Man Can't Run From The Judgment Day. They can't run away from the judgment day. They can't run away from a judgment day. Because a weak people who are too good to change to be sad. And they have a famous song called by the rivers of babylon based upon psalms 137 and they call it reggae music so this reggae music is beautiful to the ear it's like a wolf howling but listen to the lyrics and what it means it means that they're going to overthrow so if you could read that for me again benjamin shall raven as a wolf so this is how we know that the blacks throughout jamaica and the west indies are the tribe of benjamin read it again benjamin shall raven as a wolf go ahead in the morning, he shall devour the prey. What does that mean? In the morning, he shall devour the prey. What morning? The morning when Christ returns, when the kingdom is established. So it's referring to the Israelites' morning. Go ahead. And at night, he shall divide the spoil. And at night, he shall divide the spoil. What does it mean, at night? Meaning the night for the so-called white man. Lights out. It's your night time. Now we're going to divide the spoil. We're going to take all that you've stolen from us. Was that it? Yeah, it was Let's good. go to Deuteronomy 33 and verse 12. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 12. And of Benjamin, he said, the beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him. So the be Benjamin is, is the beloved of the Lord. They shall dwell sa in safety by him, meaning the Most High would protect Benjamin and they would dwell beside Judah. Go ahead. And the Lord shall cover him all day long. And the Lord shall cover him, meaning with protection, all the day long. Come on. And he shall dwell between his shoulders. And he shall dwell between his shoulders. So when you read in the history, when you read in the book of Kings, remember what the Lord said to King, to, uh, King Solomon about um, he would, when he would split the kingdom. The Lord said that upon Judah, he would give him one tribe. So like in these last days, the tribe of Benjamin has always been close with the house of Judah, tribe of Judah. Like when you read... 1 Kings 12, when it talked about the nation of Israel split. Ten tribes of Israel separated, and Judah was left alone. But look what it says here in 1 Kings 12 and 20. Right. It says, And it came to pass, when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that they sent and called him unto the, unto the congregation, and made him king over all Israel. There was none that followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin, and hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men, which were warriors, to fight against the house of, Je of Israel, to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. So Benjamin held tight with Judah. So just like in his last days, as Judah's waking up, Benjamin is starting to wake up right behind him. Why? Because that was a prophecy that Judah, Benjamin would be with Judah. 